and our stream is going to YouTube. I'm just monitor, monitoring it, and we're live on YouTube, everybody. Good afternoon, parents and community members. My name is Chad Hammett. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Personnel Services for the Fullerton School District. We want to welcome you to our FSD Learning Options webinar. And this is our webinar on what it will look like, what the learning options are regarding returning to school. We have a presentation prepared for you with updated information on reopening and on learning model choices. A few logistics. On the bottom of your screen, you will notice a Q&A icon. If you click on that Q&A icon, we can go ahead and we will have our team of panelists here reviewing those questions and providing answers uh, as they look at them. Also, if you need translation services, you can click on the bottom of your screen on the globe and there are translation services in both Spanish and Korean. Additionally, this webinar will be offered tomorrow night at 5 p.m. and Thursday night at 6 p.m. So if you'd like to listen again, or you, you have some friends or some relatives who you think would like this as well, you can ask them to tune in. We will also be recording this webinar and it is broadcast live out across YouTube. So without further ado, 
we'd like to move to some introductions of our panel members. As I said, my name is Chad Hammett. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Personnel Services. Next, I'd like to introduce Julian yeah. Lee. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julian Lee. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services. Hi, my name is Jeremy Davis. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Innovation and Instructional Support. Trang Lai. Hello, my name is Trang Lai, Director of Educational Services. Sung Chi. Hello, my name is Sung Chi. I'm the Director of Educational Services as well. We would also like to introduce our two translators. They'll just be able to wave at you. We have Shayla Hebert and Jenny Shim. Great, and then behind the scenes, we have our Director of Innovation and Instructional Support, Wes Creasel. All right. Jeremy, we can't hear you, sir. Sorry, I kept trying to unmute. I apologize. I believe uh, we also have our Director of Child Welfare and Attendance, Helene Morris, is with us as well today, I believe. All right, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and jump in the agenda. And uh, our agenda for tonight uh, is going through a number of these questions. So um, as you're listening, uh, you can sort of think, gosh, I really want to know how do I make my choice? And you're thinking about throwing that in the Q&A section. Hold off a little bit because we will get there. So we're going to start with when will in-person instruction begin? We're going to move into who will be my child's teacher. We're then going to move into how are the students being placed in, I, in all of these classes? And then what are my child's learning choices? And what does each learning choice look like? Where will my child be learning? Actual physical location on campuses. And then how do I go about making my choice? So we will be covering all of those topics in order. And then once we're wrapped up, um, we'd love to get to all of the question and answers that we can. And again, as Chad said, these will be posted online, the full versions of them recorded uh, later on uh, tomorrow morning or this evening, um, depending on how long it takes us to uh, get them taken care of. So thank you for that. This slide is to briefly show us a timeline in our journey with our response to the global pandemic. We began in March of 2020 responding to school closures with a distance learning model. Uh, it involved a pass and no gra pass grading system along with informal attendance and participation tracking, and it had optional live instruction. After the school year ended, our district worked very hard to look at strategic planning distance learning staff development, and offered a lot of summer programs. And in August of 2020, still under school closures, we were ready um, with a different, different distance learning platform as well as a program alongside with a MyFSD homeschool program. This involved traditional grading practices and systems with daily participation and attendance tracking and a formalized daily live instruction. Um, upon transition um, with clearance from the local health agency, we are looking at multiple learning options, which will be initiated very shortly. So one of the big questions that all of you have is when will in-person instruction begin? The answer is Tuesday, October 30, excuse me, 13th, 2020 for all students. Now on Monday, September 21st, 2020, select students on IEPs and special education classes will be phased in to prepare for returning to school, but all parents can plan on school starting on Tuesday, October 13th. And who will your child's teacher be? Another big question. In most cases, your child will remain with their current teacher. There may be some minor teacher changes, mainly at the junior high level, but very limited changes. We are making every attempt to keep your child with their current teacher. The important piece, especially at junior high is, students will be placed in their current academic level. For example, if a student is on an honors track or a gate track, your student will remain in that honors or gate track. If your child is placed into a specialized program, 
by dual language academy. Your child will stay in that program in the dual language academy and most likely with their current teacher. So how are students placed? Program, program placement will be based entirely on your choice as a parent. So you will have the choice and we'll go over those choices tonight of choosing our five-day model, our hybrid model, or our virtual instruction model. And then students will be placed in cohorts. We are calling two cohorts, cohort A or cohort B, based on criteria such as junior high placements and siblings. We're making sure that junior high students and elementary students are placed in a similar cohort, so they're attending school on the same days. Likewise, that siblings are placed in similar cohorts so that siblings are not split. Um, and we really are working to try to ensure that families stay together. We also will be providing parents with calendars and schedules that will lay out how are each of those cohorts set up, when do your students attend school, and what does their school attendance look like. So the next questions answer um, uh, the learning models. So what are my child's learning choices and what does each learning choice look like? We presented initially four learning options for parents, the five days of learning, the hybrid learning, virtual learning, and the MyFSD Academy. Currently, we have three of these as choices, the five-day learning, the hybrid learning, and the virtual learning. And currently, MyFSD Academy is on a waiting list status. So what are my choices today? So as a parent, you have the five-day option, which involve two full days per week and alternating Wednesdays and supervised on-campus um, virtual learning, as well as a hybrid option, which involve a two in-class, two day per week and alternating Wednesdays, as well as from a home option. And the third option would be a virtual learning option, which involve five days from home virtual learning. All students will receive five days of instruction in class via Zoom, and the maximum room capacity is anywhere from 14 to 17 students, depending on the size of the room. This is a very complex schedule, and so I want to preface the schedule um, that this it is located in a guidebook that will shortly be released. Um, I want to be able to point out the different colors in this schedule. Each color, yellow, blue, and red, indicate a cohort of group of students. So the purpose of showing you the schedule is to really disclose um, that th all three uh, groups of students are part of one community of learning. So whether you are at home whether you are in class on campus or whether you are in an alternate location zooming in, you are part of one class um, during core instruction as well as extended learning. It also shows that there are five days of consecutive learning close to a traditional day that many parents are accustomed to. This sample is for junior high only, and this is a sample only, so we ask parents to refer to your specific junior high for your child's specific schedule. We do want to show you in this schedule, however, that your child will have five days of continuous learning, similar to a traditional school day. The first day on Monday has four periods, homeroom period one, three, and five, and on another day, you have four periods, period two, four, six, and seven. On Wednesdays, you do have seven periods zooming in uh, with shortened class periods. So going a little bit deeper into the five day at school learning model. Uh, parents, please note that you'll be dropping off and picking up your child on the same time every day for five days. So students will be on campus for a regular school day, Monday through Friday, very similar to a traditional schedule. Students will be engaged in a combination of in-person and online Zoom instruction, both in their assigned classroom, as well as an alternative and supervised space. For elementary, students will receive core instruction in the morning and enrichment opportunities in the afternoon, five days per week. For most junior highs, students will receive their individual schedules that reflect a four-day period, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 
and seven shortened periods on Wednesday. Please refer to your child's school for a specific bell schedule. So still looking at the five days of learning model, the in-classroom instruction, um, students will be physically in their classroom with their core teacher two full days per week and select Wednesdays. You'll have two cohorts. You'll have cohort A for Monday and Thursday or cohort B Tuesday and Friday. Students will make, uh, schools, I'm sorry, will make every effort to ensure that the students are assigned to their current school teacher. So on the other days, there will be supervised virtual learning from the school. So on days that students are not physically in their assigned classrooms, they will attend class in an assigned alternative space supervised by support staff. Students will log into their assigned classroom to engage in core instruction and enrichment with their teacher and peers via Zoom. In cases of inclement weather, such as extreme heat, high winds, rain, where social distancing may not be possible, we will follow safety and health guidelines from the California Department of Public Health. Parents, you will have an option to keep your child home for virtual learning on those days. This is just a sample schedule um, for if you were to be placed in cohort A. So on Monday, you are in class, Tuesday, you are on campus via Zoom. Wednesday, you are in class on selected Wednesdays. Thursday, you're in class. And on Friday, you're on campus in a selective, uh, selected area via Zoom. The next schedule just shows the same schedule before cohort B. Now moving on into option two, which is the hybrid learning model. Very similar to the five-day model, students will engage in a combination of in-person and online Zoom instruction in their assigned classroom and at home. So for elementary, students will receive core instruction in the morning and enrichment opportunities in the afternoon, five days per week. And for most junior highs, students will receive their individual schedules that reflect a four period day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and seven shortened periods on Wednesdays. Once again, please refer to your child's school for a specific bell schedule. Going a little deeper into the hybrid model, the in-person class instruction looks um, like a physical uh, element where students will be physically in the classroom with their core teacher two full days per week and select Wednesdays. In-class instruction are on days, Monday, Thursday for cohort A or Tuesday, Friday for cohort B. And schools, once again, will make every effort to ensure that students are assigned to their current teacher. Now for online instruction, it can happen at home. So on the days that students are not physically in their assigned classrooms, students will attend class via Zoom, Zoom from home, which involve two full days per week and select Wednesdays. Here is a sample for cohort A, Monday through Friday, where a hybrid student will come in class, then Zoom from home, in class on select Wednesdays, in class on Thursday, and Zoom from home. And another sample, for cohort B. For option three, we have the virtual learning model. Now in March, uh, in response to the pandemic, we began the school year with the distance learning model. However, when we announced plans in June of 2020, we called this model the independent study model. As we look to August and we reopened our, uh, well, we reopened with distance learning, not reopened our schools, we called this model once again, the distance learning model. But we just want parents to know as we move forward, we are proposing the model virtual learning as a change in the name, however, very similar to the distance learning model. Although similar, there are some differences which we wanna be able to go into in the next slide. So with the virtual learning model, students will log into their assigned classrooms Monday through Friday using Zoom. Schools will make every effort once again to ensure that students are assigned to their current teacher. Junior high students will receive a course schedule. And a space is reserved for your child upon physical return. We want parents to know that 
uh, the district sent out an initial message regarding the independent study model, which we're interchanging now with the term virtual learning model, that we will no longer have the piece about enrollment um, being just, uh, meaning your enrollment being packed based on choosing this model. So no longer are we recommending a trimester timeline um, in, in being a part of this model. When you are ready to physically return, a space will be ready for you in that classroom. And this is just a sample of um, Zooming at home every day of the week. Now, there are differences between the distance learning model as well as the virtual learning because your child will be Zooming in and being a part of a community of learners as a teacher is simultaneously teaching in person as well as Zooming the students um, through, obviously, a virtual platform. Okay. Um my FSD Academy homeschool, you might think, gosh, there was a fourth choice before. Um, and there was, and currently there is a wait list for this model. What we do, uh, we did offer the My FSD Academy homeschool model at both Rolling Hills and Orange Thorpe Elementary. And uh, we had a wonderful response. We have opening extra classes and we now have two classes at both schools. Um, but it did start August 11th and there currently is a waiting list. So if you're thinking that the homeschool is something you would like to explore, Right now, uh, it is by waitlist only. So you could go to the website and look at that model and fill out paperwork to get on the waiting list, but there's no guarantee that another class would be open at any time this year. So you'd still need to choose one of the learning options and one of the ways we'll describe momentarily. So where will my child be learning? Okay. So with our reopening plan, um, you can see cohort A and cohort B, again, color-coded. So if we just start on the left side with cohort A, the yellow. So the hybrid and five-day option. So when they're in class, Mondays, Thursdays, and alternating Wednesdays, then the other students that go home, those will be the hybrid. The, the students who decide on the five-day, on Tuesdays, Fridays, and alternating Wednesdays, will be somewhere on campus via Zoom. We have a number of places students might be. They might be in a multi-purpose room. They might be in a library and media center. We have rented large tents like you would see at a wedding or at a celebration, and some students might be there. Some students might be under shade structures. Uh, we have worked with some of our local community organizations who have large facilities that are located right next to our campuses, and some students might be going there as well. Um, so uh, as you can see, both cohort A and cohort B very similar as far as where they will actually be learning. And students will be put on a rotational basis for the five-day option. So if a student um, is under a tent on the outdoors one day, they might be in the MPR there every other day. So there will be a rotation of students um, in, in the places they will be learning based on space and based on site. Almost every site is different at this point in time, just based on the spaces they have available. So how do I make my choice by September 14th? There are three ways to make the choice. First is going to our parent portal, which we found um, under our parent section of our website. And you can make your choice there. If you've already made a choice, you can go right back in and log in and make the choice again. You can change it, no problem. Just hit that submit button. You need to make one choice for every single student. And then it says you can print the choice document that was sent by email on September 8th. This actually was not sent yet today because we are still in the process of translating that document. So that will come out this week, but also we'll be sending it out to school office staff. So option three was go to your school office and fill in that document for each student. So those, those documents will be available just a little bit later this week as soon as we can get them translated. So that is the end of our presentation. We are going to go into our question and answer screen. Um, and take a look at our, our Q&A. And I'm going to open up uh, the microphones to others because I'm sharing my screen. I can't actually see the Q&A, um, but we have a number of people here ready to answer questions. A good question asked was from a junior high parent about the level of academic classes um, and electives choices. So yes, the answer to that question is your child will retain or remain in their academic levels as well as get their elective choices.
more information to come regarding uh, fee-based preschool programs. We are working on uh, making sure the community um, has that information prior to the reopening of schools. Also, somebody said, um, would the student's decision be a trimester commitment? In other words, will they be able to switch? Yes, because of the new model um, that, that we've worked on uh, with, our, with our teachers, um, the, the students will be able to switch in and out of the models if they need to. So what that means is if they're currently in hybrid and they decide, you know, I'd really like to stay at home and do virtual learning, it's fine because they'll already be assigned to that teacher and that teacher will be doing both the Zoom and be doing um, the, the in-person class at the same time. So that's not a problem to change out. There's a question regarding under the revised models, will all students be with their core teacher five days a week? This is drastically different than the old model. It is. All students, whether they are distance or virtual learning, whether they are attending the hybrid model or attending five days per week, will be with their teacher five days a week. Some will be Zooming in, whether that's virtually or if in the five-day model elsewhere on campus. Others will be uh, with their, their teacher every other day, but everyone will be learning from their teacher five days a week. If you typed in your question in the chat box, if you can um, type it into the Q&A section, we will be able to answer your questions. We also have, I see in the attendee list under participants, four people who have a hand raised. Again, if you have a question, please do that over in the Q&A rather than clicking the, the hand raise in the attendance so we can answer all in one place. We have a number of questions that are in a, a similar um, model. The, the So one from BK, the same teacher will be teaching live to students in his or her classroom and simultaneously teaching to a camera. Yes, that is accurate. Um, so teachers will be teaching very similar to how they are now, but it just depends on the teacher and how they approach. Uh, but yes, they will be able to teach to um, the hybrid students uh, and the five-day students who are in their class because it will be a limited number, along with the rest of the students through the Zoom at the same time. Also a question, it says, if our teacher ends up teaching from home, can we switch to the virtual model even after September 14th? Yes, if teachers are teaching from home, then there will be a substitute teacher assigned to the classroom and the students will be supervised by the substitute. The teacher will be zooming in to the, to the students in the classroom and zooming with the students who are part of the virtual learning model and of the five-day model. So they will remain with their current teacher even if that teacher is teaching from home. And you can switch to the virtual learning model if you would like to do that, even if it is after September 14th. Okay, I don't. Jennifer has a question. Are first graders being rotated off of campus in the rotation for five days? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. The, the five-day model, almost all students will remain on campus. The only time there would be anybody going off our immediate campus is if it's one of our community partners who is allowing us to utilize space next to campus. So that would be the only time anyone would ever be off campus. I don't know if that's the question. What technology are we using in the classroom to help students on Zoom not get lost? Um, we have a, a couple of things we're doing in our classrooms. One is we have purchased an audio amplification system for every single teacher in the district um, to help them teach through a mask. So if they are wearing a mask, they now have a microphone that will hang around their neck that actually does two things. One, it increases their volume in the classroom itself. But second, we can plug this system directly into the computer 
So no matter if the teacher gets up and walks away or walks out into the classroom to help someone, their, their live voice will be broadcast really, really well right into the Zoom. It's actually a much better microphone than just what comes with the normal laptop. So um, st all teachers have a television or a, some kind of projection system in their room um, that will be used as well. Plus, every teacher has both a laptop and an iPad. So most of them Zoom from their laptop while they use their iPad to actually um, do work that the, that the students can see in a whiteboard function as well. Um, and if all the children, and since all the children have iPads, they'll be do using their iPads in the classroom as well, and they'll be able to see everything in the Zoom plus what's happening in the classroom. There is a question that if students are in the tents and they're learning in the tents, will there be chairs and tables? Yes, there will be. They'll be distant six feet apart to maintain social distancing guidelines. And there will be tables and Wi-Fi available so that students can access the Zoom and their classroom instruction, instruction outside in the tents. Levi, um, uh, yes, the original hybrid model had the extras for the five days, but the, with the new agreement we've come to and with teachers being able to Zoom while teaching their in-class students, we're now able to offer core instruction five days a week. The question asks, if our current teacher ends up teaching from home, can we switch to the virtual learning model even after September 14th? So there's two parts uh, to this. Even if your current teacher teaches from home, you still can choose the other learning models because you'll be supported with another teacher in the classroom on a physical um, to be able to guide the physical in-person instruction in addition to your current teacher teaching in Zoom. But you can also switch learning models um, even after September 14th. So to answer both sides of the question. Can we request cohort A or B or is that assigned? That will be assigned. We will be trying to work uh, with siblings and, and some of those situations to try and group together, um, but that, that is not a current request. Will the teachers be, um, oh, I lost it. Okay, will the teachers be in, um, instructing two groups at one time, one group in person and one group via Zoom? The answer is yes. There's a question that says, the verbiage is inconsistent regarding having the same instructor as our children have now. Is it make an effort or is it solidified that the teacher will remain the same regardless of choice and that their spot in their class is safe? We will make every effort, meaning we are not looking at many classroom changes, especially at the elementary level. The teacher that your child is currently with will 99% be the same teacher that your child will stay with. Now there are things that happen that are outside of our control. Sometimes teachers have accidents. Sometimes there are medical issues. There are things that happen in the course of life that we can't guarantee that your child will be with the same teacher, but 99% they will be. Whether you choose the hybrid, the, the virtual learning, or the five-day model, your child will continue to learn with either virtually or in person the same teacher. Someone asked for an email link, Wayne, uh, for the portal link. I just put it in the chat box. Please be sure to contact your school site's office staff for assistance. If you need sort of your login information, they can get that from you out of PowerSchool. If you would like to request that your kids are not placed in the same schedule, um, I would speak to the administration at your child's school to make sure that you can work together with the school making that happen. Uh, Leslie asked, how will we know whether the schools are safe from other kids? Um, so there are a couple of things we have in place. Number one, uh, we're doing a full attestation process with um, the Orange County Department of Health, and they will not allow us to open until they feel we have done everything in our power to make it as safe as possible for your students and for our staff as well. Um, so we have a number of things, things like temperature scanning on the way in. We'll be checking everyone's temperature. 
uh, before they come on campus. Um, you know, so those are the kind of things where we, we have hand sanitizers that are now in every single classroom. We have extra hand washing stations and things like that. So um, while, while you know nothing can ever be guaranteed, we are doing everything in our power and have gone, uh, the, the Orange County Department of Health we're working with have been uh, very um, thankful for the steps that we have taken as a school district in purchasing uh, PPE, purchasing medical, getting hand sanitizer out uh, way before uh, a lot of our attestation process was necessary. There's a question regarding the schedule, Monday through Friday. Is it 8.30 to 12.30 or a different schedule? Or is it from uh, another question regarding, is it a regular full day until 2 p.m.? For students who are on campus, the schedule will look very similar to the pre-pandemic schedule with students attending school for, from the beginning of the, of the school day until approximately 2 p.m. So it won't be the exact same length, but it will look very similar for students who are attending on campus. Jody, the question is, can you provide information on how teachers will teach students in person and virtually simultaneously? Will the students in person simply be working on their iPads in class? No, that's not our goal. Our goal is that the teacher who will also be Zooming will also be engaging with their students at the same time in class. So the lessons will be the same. The, so the, the lessons are being taught to everyone at the exact same time. But there will be engagement in person, just like there will be engagement on the Zoom. So um, it, it's not an identical experience. Um, they will have their iPads up with them just so they can see what's being shared by the teacher on the share screen. But like no one will have headphones in. They won't just be you know, looking at the screen with their headphones um, if that's the way the teacher decides to teach. There are definitely ways that we are going to be training our teachers on. Um, that, that will allow them to be more interactive uh, with both the Zoom and with the, the students in the class. Freddie asks if with junior high students will be mixing groups um, or they'll be placed in academic core groups and will the group mix with other groups for other classes. So uh, they will be placed in cohorts in which um, they're, the day is sectioned off into the periods um, based on their cohorts and there will be cleaning in between as their cohorts do sift uh, and change throughout the day. But in between um, we have put in place our safety precautions and measures to be able to make sure that the, not only the social distancing is in place, but the, all the cleaning um, is done in between the cohorts, um, shift, I guess, changing schedules. Okay, um, Amy, if students and staff begin to test positive, will schools be sent home to quarantine? How many positive cases on campus are acceptable? There are very specific rules that are laid out um, by the state and by the county health department. Um, I would, I believe, uh, I hate to say it out loud if it's if I'm not perfect on this, but I believe it's 5% of a student in class. So in class, if 5% of the students are positive, um, then that class would go home. If 5% of a school is positive. So multiple classes, they go home, the whole school goes home. And I believe if 25% of a district schools have to be closed, then the whole district closes. We will research this to get the exact information from the state and we will post it on as part of our FAQ with the learning uh, on the learning options website. So what I just said is what I believe to be true. I am not 100% on that because it was a couple of weeks since I read that information. So I apologize, that might not be perfect, but there are very specific percentages based on number of students, number of classes, then number of schools that have been laid out by the state. If you have multiple children, please work with your school site to place them in the same or different cohort. Um, to respond to Q's question on after I make a choice of A or B um, and the start of school and started school on this basis and then decide to opt for cohort C, can I do it? Absolutely, you can change to the virtual learning option um, after initially making a choice of either the for choice one or two. Mm -hmm. 
So Andrea, uh, what's the plan if students or staff test positive? One of the reasons uh, we reached out to our teacher community and said, hey, we'd like to, to try this, was the great thing about how classes will now be formed is that students can trade into hybrid or back to virtual instruction or virtual learning. But also if we had, do have to quarantine or if there's a flare up in COVID and everybody has to close down, they'll stay in the exact same class. So it's very continuous. So if a student gets sick and needs to stay home, they're not moved anywhere. They stay with the exact same teacher, same experience because we've built it. So whether they're in class, whether they're on campus somewhere else or whether they're at home, they get the same exact experience from that teacher. So it'll, it should work relatively seamlessly as well as it can during COVID-19. <laughs> Rachel, we will have speech therapy in person as well as Zoom options. And there is a question just along the line of the question Jeremy just answered that if Orange County goes from red back to purple, what is our plan? The beauty of this new model is that classes can, if we have to go back into a purple stage, can move from hybrid and five day back into all virtual or distance learning. So there is a way to go right back to that, maintain your child's current teachers and their current learning progress. Cindy, our expectation is that all students and staff from TK through eighth Eight will be wearing masks. Um, G and M, I hope I said that right. I apologize if I didn't. If I choose virtual learning, do I just decide when I'm ready to send my children to school, or is there a specific date they can start returning? Um, that yes, you 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 have those choices. As long as we're in this sort of pandemic mode in the state of California, where we're offering the virtual learning, there will be choices to be able to move in and out of those choices. If at some point the state says we're now done with this and everybody goes back to school, um, then obviously that would no longer be a choice to do virtual learning. Hey, um, Shaylee asked, will the technology change to make it easier for teachers to manage both Zoom and in person, like a swivel? Uh, we're absolutely ordering a number of items that are it's going to make it easier for the teachers. Things like uh, goosenecks um, for an iPad, where the, you know, they can move that iPad around, um, being able to turn their iPad into a document camera, uh, things like that. So there's absolutely technology that we are purchasing as a district, um, and we're actually even setting up some classrooms for teachers to see what it's like. There is a question regarding how will restrooms be continuously cleaned? We are bringing extra custodial staff onto our school campuses. Uh, we will have extra custodial staff and regular frequent cleaning schedules, not only of restrooms, but of all high touch surfaces so that we can ensure students are kept safe and surfaces are kept clean and sanitized. Um, Tim asks, what happens on holidays, namely typical Mondays off? Does Monday, Thursday cohort lose a day of in-person instruction? Because the instruction is no longer repeating of lessons, you don't lose a le lesson. It's as if, you know, in a traditional school year where the Monday holiday is observed as the holiday and your instruction continues on Tuesday. So whether you're Zooming or in person, the instruction will be continuous. Julie G asks, since there will be five days um, a week, will the hours be like the current hours or will we switch to traditional school hours? They will be more uh, close to traditional school hours. But however, each site has different bell schedules. So we ask that the parents work with the sites to get um, current bell schedules, not now, but as, as we get closer to reopening, you'll be able to see start and end times, but it'll be very similar to the traditional school hours pre-COVID. We have a question regarding will, uh, this is from Maria Nava, will face masks be provided to children in school? We will provide face coverings for children at school if they need them. We will have cloth face coverings that are washable that we will provide in addition to disposable paper face coverings in case a child forgets their mask for that day. Additionally, 
Um, how regularly will school uh, will schools provide updates regarding staff or children tested positive for COVID? If we receive results of a positive COVID test and your child is uh, someone considered in contact, either primarily or secondarily, we will notify. And uh, we additionally will be monitoring um, children who may report that someone in their household uh, has been affected by COVID. And we work directly with the Orange County Healthcare Agency. They are the agency that provides us with guidance and conducts what we call contact tracing. So if there's a positive case, they'll work directly with us to determine what children, if any children need to be quarantined, uh, who needs to be notified and what sort of notification needs to be provided. Susanna asks for junior high like LV, are hybrid students physically moving from classroom to classroom for each period? No, students will be in cohorts, actually three cohorts throughout the day, and they'll be cleaning in between each cohort moving. There's a question uh, from an anonymous attendee. It sounds like all students will keep their same teacher periods at LB. Is that correct, regardless of learning choice, virtual or hybrid? Yes, that is correct. Students will keep their same, their same periods, their same teachers as much as possible, and definitely their same programs, whether they're virtual or hybrid. Cindy asks, would hybrid or virtual learners have the same opportunity to get the uh, same extracurricular activities? Absolutely. Um, the afternoon, they will have extended learning opportunities, um, enrichment activities, and all students will have access. Annie asks, will teachers be in front of the camera all the time, or will it swivel to follow them around the room? Uh, no, it won't. Uh, it won't swivel automatically to follow them around the room. Any teacher that wants, depending on what they're teaching, can uh, can turn their machine to do more of a cl whole class setup um, if they'd like to to do that versus being in front of the camera themselves. But um, they, you know, and there are times obviously when they'll leave to go maybe speak with another student while students are starting to do some independent work, um, and they might go be working in the classroom with those students. But they will be uh, full audio all the time because of a wireless mic setup that we are doing. Um, but the, the iPad or the computer itself won't swivel around to, to um, follow them. There's well, a question you, from... Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Emmett. There's a question from Andrea regarding what will recess and lunch look like in regards to distancing and maintaining safe, safe and healthy environments. So students will be in, working in cohorts and they will stay with their cohort, whether that's at lunch or at recess. Um, they will go out in a cohort and will be assigned an area where they're able to play with that same cohort and really be able to uh, maintain distancing. Lunch also will be done with cohorts. Lunches will be staggered throughout the day to ensure that students are able to distance, um, that they're able to eat in an environment, whether that be in the classroom or in an outdoor area where they're not facing each other, uh, where they're able to maintain distancing and maintain proper uh, health and hygiene. Uh, standards at this time with COVID. Both Jenny and Jennifer ask about the hours, um, if there's a reduction in hours or if they're modified or is it kept as it is now. The hours actually um, look different because it's more than what we're doing now currently. You'll have approximately hour more of en enrichment instruction in the afternoon for first through eighth grade. How long will virtual learning option be available until the end of school year, June 2021? I guess that would be uh, contingent upon how long we are um, under um, stricter guidelines for reopening. Um, at this point, we have not uh, released any end date to virtual learning and, and its option. Okay. Um, somebody's asking about the parent portal accounts. Please reach out to your school site office staff for information regarding the, the child's ID and parent access code. Um, you may also send an email um, to, there's an email address on the parent portal when you go to the link, 
Um, but there are only two people that answer that email versus 20 office staff who could help you at the various sites. So we encourage you to first call the office um, and to get that information so you can make your choice this week. There's a request regarding how often are teachers and staff tested for COVID? We just finished our first test administration. Every single employee in the Fullerton School District is tested for COVID every two months. We will begin, uh, we've tested everyone initially and we will begin a rotating process by which all employees are tested monthly uh, on an alternating basis so that everyone gets tested at least every two months. Okay, what is the plan for when a student or teacher is COVID positive? How will you know if someone in a cohort of school is positive? I think we've answered this. Um, I think Chad answered most of this earlier. So again, we will follow all state guidelines, the Orange County Department of Health's guidelines. They'll do contract uh, contact tracing with us. And every time we know someone's positive, we immediately reach out to the Orange County Public Health, or sorry, we have to do that. And then they help us with our contact tracing. So, um, and as far as knowing if someone, again, it's staff is being tested regularly. And if students are exhibiting um, symptoms, obviously they'll be sent home. There's a question that asking if the return date is set in stone or could it change if there are increased cases in the near future. Uh, we are again relying on the Orange County Health Care Authority to give us guidance regarding reopening. At this time, the county has moved from purple to red. So as a result, um, there is another 14 day period from today from when schools could open. However, if things change, we will keep you updated at this time. Uh, though our enrollment date is Tuesday, October 13th. Our reopen date is October 13th. And we will let you know in case there's any changes. Erica asked for the five day option on the days that they're not in the physical classroom, but somewhere else. Will they Zoom for the morning instruction? And what will students be doing the rest of the day? Um, the teachers will be teaching a full day. They will have core instruction in the morning and enrichment in the afternoon. There's a question from Jennifer saying, I was told that there would be no tables or chairs in the tents. I was informed that yoga mats are the current plan. Who are parents supposed to believe? I've spoken to many different levels of the district. So the answer to the question is there will be tables and chairs in any area where students are expected to learn, where they're expected to zoom in and take part in the learning. The yoga mats, the plan for the yoga mats is for students who self-select, who choose that they would like to go eat outside on the grass. The yoga mats are provided so they can eat on the grass, but the yoga mats are not for the learning. The learning will be tables and chairs provided in the tents. There are a couple of questions from YouTube that came in. One is how are physical activity, including team sports being handled? Um, they will be handled based on what's allowed based on Orange County Department of Health and on state guidelines. So there's, there are some very specific guidelines around what we can and cannot do. So we'll be following those guidelines. And then someone else asked, how soon will schools reopen? Um, going back to the, the very beginning of the webinar, October 13th will be the first day back physically for students, um, except for um, some uh, specific students in our special ed educational program uh, will be coming back in very small cohorts starting September 21st and will be phased in. For lunch and recess, students will be in their cohorts. We will be rotating play equipment and doing proper cleaning after each rotation. There's a question regarding the protocol of what if someone tests positive. Uh, just to reiterate, if we have identified that a student, a staff member, or a family member tests positive, uh, that individual is immediately uh, removed from the setting around others. And then we will contact the Orange County Healthcare Authority. Contact tracing will begin, and we will then notify any affected student or staff member taking our direction from the Orange County Healthcare Authority. 
Julie G, most um, school sites and classrooms are equipped with large TV monitors. Um, whether teachers utilize the monitors to Zoom with kids will be up to the teacher, but they have different platforms, iPad, laptop, and a large TV monitor in the classroom that they can utilize. Um, Estella, my children have different last names. How can I make sure they're placed in the same cohort? So um, be sure if you have any questions about the cohort um, and you have very specific situations, um, handle that through your site. So please reach out um, to your site and the office staff there uh, to let them know um, that you want you know, them placed together and exactly what their names are and to just to make sure you have your request in. Mass asks, particularly for students that for whatever reason didn't get to stay with their current teacher. If that question is more um, in what situation, um, we, it may be for particular junior highs and subjects, uh, there may be a teacher switch there, but we are looking to make every effort to keep retain, especially in the elementary for students to retain their current teacher. Anonymous says, today my child was told by her teacher that the students in virtual learning will not have their questions answered, nor be called upon because the teacher will be paying attention to the students in the classroom. Is this true? We are going to be training all of our teachers um, to work with the Zoom, and there, there's, a, there's a lot of strategies they can use. Um, you know, a lot of teachers like to give students uh, classroom jobs. One of the jobs can be keep an eye on the chat up on the big TV, you know, so see who's asking questions. Um, but no, we, we absolutely make sure that all teachers are trained, that they can handle both questions from the students in the classroom, as well as continuing to pay attention to those students in their Zoom. Uh, that, that's, that's part of how the whole class will work together. We have received a question, if parents will be receiving a list of teachers who will be teaching from home, we will not be publishing a list. Uh, your individual classroom, your child's current teacher will let you know of the arrangement in the classroom as to whether that teacher will be present in the classroom, whether that teacher will be teaching from home, and then there's a substitute teacher that will provide the physical supervision. But each teacher will let you know based upon which class your student is currently enrolled in. Someone on YouTube asked um, a question to me. How can I say all state guidelines will be followed if a few minutes ago you said you're not sure of what the guidelines are? Okay, so um, we haven't reopened schools yet. So uh, so while the guidelines are there, I personally just haven't memorized if it's the, really the 5525 rule. Um, but, but obviously before school opened, we will absolutely be following those. And we're going to be looking those up and posting them as well. So I was just trying to give information in the webinar um, uh, of what my remembrance was, but we'll absolutely be posting the correct information uh, into the FAQ and obviously before school starts. Thanks. There is a question um, from YouTube regarding if a child can't or won't wear a mask, how will this be handled? We will work with each child and each parent to facilitate and support that child. We, we have children who at times uh, either do or do not want to do homework, who choose or cho do not choose to participate in classwork. And so we work with children individually. We have um, some other options besides just a face covering that we can work with individual parents on. Uh, but really, we want to make sure our schools reopen and stay open. So we are uh, requiring masks for all children, but we will work with children who perhaps uh, are not wearing them or have a difficult time wearing them. Again, there is a process as well for children who have medical issues or uh, whether there's some uh, social emotional issues that will not allow them to wear a mask. And we will work with parents um, individually on that. Katerina, students will have um, PE classes as well as art classes. Uh, for elementary, we're looking for the afternoon to be the enrichment time. So we're, we'll be utilizing our PE teachers as well as our, all the art staff to provide that enrichment support. There was a question regarding, will there be teacher aides assisting in each classroom? There will not be aides assisting in each classroom. We will provide teaching aides for the younger, for the lower grade primary classrooms. Also, there was a second question, will any of the options and changes affect programs like dual language? 
Our dual language academy will continue with their current teacher in their current classes. And just the learning options will be available to parents who select the dual language academy for their children. So they can choose the virtual learning, the five day or the hybrid, even with students in the dual language program. There's a question of when will parents find out which cohort their child will be with? Uh, we are leaving the window open for parents to select which option they'd like to choose through the 14th of September. After the 14th of September, we'll need time to go through all the data and then we will inform parents of what the option looks like uh, right towards the beginning of October. Sonali asked, will there be a way for us to see what the headcount is running in all options and decide? Um, currently, this time, that's not something we're publishing um, as far as, as what those numbers look like. Uh, we are still waiting. At the moment, uh, we had our old date of September 4th, um, but currently only, I believe, 4,000 of our 13, of our 12,000 uh, students have been decided for. So um, that's not even information that we have at the moment, to be honest. Um, and if everybody waits for us to publish numbers to make a decision, then we wouldn't have numbers to publish. So, um, so I, I don't believe that's something that we plan on publishing. Susan asks if uh, students choose virtual learning, would the format be the same as it is right now? Would teachers teaching directly through Zoom or if students will be live streaming the in-person classes? So there's different ways to look at the model. There'll be direct instruction where, you know, the direct instruction may be directed at in-person where the Zoom is now recording that or you're able to access it via live stream Zoom. However, I can see a teacher being very creative and flipping that around as well, working um, in smaller groups or working with the Zoom platforms as her in-person does asynchronous learning and being able to flip that time as well. So there's many ways we can look at it. There will be training, as Mr. Davis mentioned, for teachers to utilize Zoom as well as have in-person teaching simultaneously. There was a question asked in Spanish uh, from Giselle asking about uh, security measures and that we haven't said anything regarding the security measures that we're taking. Don't want to spend a lot of time and you can find a very detailed uh, COVID-19 related plan on our uh, website under our COVID-19 tab. However, just a few things. All students will be screened every morning uh, by a series of uh, screening questions and having their thermos, their temperature taken as they come into school. Additionally, uh, students will be socially distancing. Students will be wearing face coverings. Uh, we will be instituting regular hand washing and hand sanitizing. Additionally, students will remain with cohorts of students and uh, we will be doing frequent cleaning on the campuses throughout the day of uh, high touch surfaces and surfaces that uh, students frequently use such as restrooms. Additionally, we have done some things physically on the campus that you will notice, you will see that um, we have, re you won't be able to see, but you, we have replaced all of the air conditioning uh, filters in the campus and made those up to the standard required by the California Department of Public Health, um, as well as you will see all over the campuses markings reminding students of where proper social distancing is, uh, how, what facilities they can and can't use. There are many, many uh, safety, health and safety measures that have been put in place by the district. Giselle asked the question in Spanish, if you decide to take classes at home, uh, who will your professor or your teacher be? And will you be in the same class with your friends at the same class um, and the child is in gate? So you will continue to have your gate placement with the same teacher and with the same students that you currently have in the classroom. 
I went ahead and posted into the chat window the current California Department of Public Health uh, COVID-19 and reopening in-person learning framework for K-12 schools in California that was published on July 17th of this year. So um, just to, as we go down and, and, and retrace a couple of things that were said, one of, so it does talk about the 5% rule. It talks about um, individual school closure may be appropriate when there are multiple cases in multiple cohorts at a school or when at least 5% of the total number of teacher, student, staff have cases within a 14 day period. Depends on the size and physical layout of the school. And again, the local health officer will determine some of those as well with the superintendent. Then what are the criteria for closing a school district? Like I mentioned, a superintendent should close a school district if 25% or more of schools in a district have closed due to COVID-19 within 14 days of each other, and also in consultation with the local public health department. And a school district may reopen typically 14 days after, but also in consultation with that local public health department. So a lot of this will be based on the Orange County Public Health working with us and, and teams together. There's a question regarding first grade. What does the afternoon enrichment consist of? And if you choose virtual learning, will you have access to the same enrichment opportunities from home? So students in the afternoon as part of the enrichment will be participating in arts activities, PE, um, STEM activities, project-based learning. And if students select who are virtually learning that they would like to participate, it's optional for students in the virtual learning, but yes, they will be able to participate. All right, I know we've hit the end, but we have 128 open questions. Um, we're a little over time. Uh, what we will be doing um, is we'll be taking the questions and turning them into uh, a frequently asked questions document. So we'll be working through these questions and posting them. We'll also be posting uh, this entire webinar that's been recorded onto the website as well. So we'll have another webinar tomorrow uh, and then another one on Thursday. Um, but we will absolutely be posting the entire recording of the webinar, uh, which has a lot of these questions answered. And then we'll be taking the open questions uh, to add them to that frequently asked questions document. Julian, chat, anything else jumping out at you before we, we have to wrap up? I know we're five minutes over at this point. Yeah, I was trying to squeeze as many as I can. <laughs> type them. Yes, I think the most important thing is that we will get the question and answer document out. Yeah. And we really appreciate everyone's feedback and input and questions. These are great questions. Uh, there seem to be a number of questions that are, that are similar. I think we can knock out all at once. So there seems to be a question around, well, if there's 17 students, like, you know, you have 30. 32, 34 in a class, how that's going to work. Um, and then however many we can put in based on six foot distancing, we've already measured all of our rooms. So if 17 can fit in the hybrid, what that's assuming is that's assuming no one in that entire class selected virtual learning, that every single student wanted to come back to hybrid or five day, and you'd have 17 in cohort A and 17 in cohort B. So there's no way we can fill the hybrid so students who chose virtual learning couldn't come back. So if 20% choose virtual learning out of that 34 and seven are staying at home or eight are staying at home to make the number a little easier, so eight off of 32, okay, then your, your hybrid will now be similar sized groups and just smaller. So maybe now you have 12 and 12 on your hybrid cohorts. So you have smaller class size. Everyone else is zooming in that day. But if someone who is virtual says, oh, I really wanted a hybrid. I want to go back. That looks like more fun. I want to be on campus. No problem. You can drop right in. Now, if cohort A already has 17 and that's the max for that room, they might need to go to cohort B, but it will be the exact same set of students 
that are always working together with that teacher. Those same 32 or 34 students will always be the same. So whether they stay at home or whether they're on five day or whether they're on hybrids, there will always be a space for them. Okay. Well, I believe we have, we're now seven, eight, seven minutes, eight minutes past our time. We do need to end the webinar. But again, what we will be doing is we will be taking, there are seven, eight of us working on this. We will be taking all of those open questions and turning them into what will be a very large um, frequently asked questions document. We'll be posting that. We will also be posting the recordings of this webinar and we will be back again tomorrow. Um, the beginning of the webinar will be the same. Uh, we'll be using the, the, the same um, uh, PowerPoint, the same Google uh, slide deck for the beginning. And then the, the only thing that will be different is the Q&A. Um, although I'm assuming there will be a lot of the same questions, which we are happy to answer over and over, um, because we want you to make the absolute best choice with the most information possible. So please feel free at any time to go to our website. We have a learning options website where we'll be posting these webinars. Uh, we'll be posting the presentation as well. Um, but also, if you go to our COVID update page, a lot of the documents you might be interested in, such as Orange County Public Health documents or California Department of Health guidelines for reopening schools, a lot of those things are posted to our website. So you can get a whole lot of these documents there. Um, and, and hopefully, uh, by the time we're done with the three webinars and a long list of frequently asked questions, everyone will feel very comfortable making uh, a choice for their children uh, as they move forward. Um, so we want to thank you all. A lot of attendees tonight, a lot of folks out on YouTube. We want to thank you for joining us on YouTube and putting some questions out there. Uh, and again, we will be grabbing um, these, these questions and, and doing as much as we can, as quick as we can uh, to post them to our website. Uh, so with that, we, we thank you all so much. Um, and, and just know that, that we are doing everything in our power uh, to make this experience the best for our staff and the best for your kids um, here in our Fullerton community. We, uh, we, we, truly, um, we truly care for your children and we truly care about this experience. And um, we are doing everything we can to work through COVID and, and it's been a brand new experience for all of us uh, trying, to, trying to work through um, education in a time of pandemic. So we hope we're serving you well. Uh, and we will continue these webinars tomorrow. Thank you all so much for your time tonight.